Looking for a way to get healthy? The Chef You and I program has the answer. Catherine Raker and chefs from around the nation will teach even the most inexperienced how to cook. Come into their kitchen and watch them take ordinary foods with loads of calories and fat and turn those foods into healthier dishes. You will be the first to get tips and ideas on foods that are easy to prepare. Now let's join Catherine and today's chef and learn how to make today's recipes. Hi, this is Catherine Raker of The Chef You and I. You know, summer's almost over and fall is beginning, but there's still wonderful things like watermelon and cantaloupe. And, and you know, we're going to do a Polish cream coffee cake. And the first thing that we're going to make today is a watermelon and prosciutto and burrata salad. And it's made with fresh watermelon basil leaves, tomatoes, and burrata cheese. So we're going to make that first. And then what we're going to make is a cold cantaloupe soup. And so we're going to show you how to do all of it. And then we're going to make a Polish cream cheese coffee cake, which I am so excited about making since I am Polish. And I love wonderful coffee cakes. And it's a nice thing that you can do in the early fall with a cup of coffee. So let's start with our wonderful bruschetta salad. So let's start with that. And then the first thing that we need to do, actually, is I went ahead and did two cups of fresh basil. And then you're supposed to put it in, you put it in for about a minute of boiling water. Take it out immediately and put it in an ice cube bath, which I've already done. The next thing you want to do is you want to take your basil and you want to blot it with a paper towel to make sure you get almost all of the moisture out of it because you're going to take one and a half cups of olive oil in a blender as soon as I get these dry and we're going to put them into the uh, food processor or a blender and then what you're going to do is you're going to blend it and then we're going to take this wonderful we have a mesh wire uh, sieve and we're going to use actually cheesecloth and we're going to let that go in there and let it go for about 10 minutes until it gets through the cheesecloth okay so this looks about good so we're going to take this and we're going to put this into our food processor right leaves and stems and all right into the food processor really simple and that looked like a lot of leaves when we first started but it doesn't look like much now this is almost like when you're, you know, you're making pesto, but it's a little different. So we've done that. Now we've already pre-measured one and a half cups of uh, virgin olive oil, and I've used the light virgin olive oil. So let's put that in there. Okay, and then we're just going to process that real quick. We missed a leave there, and that will only take a few seconds. And once you do that, you want to make sure that they're all chopped up. Okay, we're done with that. And maybe one more time. Okay, now that's done. We're going to take that off. And then we're going to pour that. Take that off there. And then it'll come right off. Okay, sometimes we have these little problems. But what you're going to do is you're going to pour it through the sieve right here in the cheesecloth. And you're gonna let that actually drain for about 10 minutes. So we're gonna do everything else that we need to do. We're gonna clean this off real quick. And just a second, we don't need this any longer. We'll put this aside and let that strain into this bowl. So what we're gonna do next is we're gonna cut up our wonderful cherry tomatoes. We're going to cut up our wonderful cherry tomatoes because they're going to go on to the platter where we're going to have watermelon, tomatoes, and um, actually the basil dressing. 
Haman or prosciutto, and also burrata cheese. So we're going to take a, just a short break, and we're going to collect all the other things, and we'll be, able, be right back. The next thing that we're going to do is we're going to cut in half our cherry tomatoes, and then we will cut our prosciutto, and then our burrata or mozzarella cheese, and then our watermelons are already cut up, and our wonderful basil and olive oil is actually becoming a the dressing. So let's do this first. Let's cut up in half these cherry tomatoes, and they're really beautiful right now. So you're going to really enjoy the salad. It's such a nice, healthy salad, and I think that you're going to love it. Um, I know I did when I first tried it. It was really good. And then that cool wonderful cantaloupe soup because cantaloupes are in season right now so that'll be good um, you know anytime you want to make a cold soup uh, and have a salad like this and maybe a little dessert that's a really nice meal especially and actually we're in the last days of summer falls coming up and I'll tell you what it's been in the 80s here and it's been cold before that so this week we're doing all 80s, and then the following week we go into fall. So this is something that you can do for the whole family, and anybody that's on a diet, they can handle this. And especially vegetarians just don't use a bruschetta cheese, or br uh, bruschetta, uh, which we call, when I lived in Spain, jamón. And it's so nice. It tastes so great. You could use something else for a vegetarian. You could put pine nuts in. You could use feta additionally. I mean, use your imagination. That would be great. Or you could use a couple different types of melon. And you don't have to use watermelon. You could use, um, you could use sugar melon, cantaloupe, any kind of melon for this recipe. It's really simple. So we're almost done with our tomatoes. And then we're going to put them aside. And then we will put our watermelon. So we'll take this and put these back in here. We're done with those. So that was really simple. And let's do this real quick. Uh -huh. And I know you're probably enjoying, it's been a nice summer this year, okay? And we're also going to use a few basil leaves, so I'm going to chop those up because you want to you want to use that in the salad too, just to decorate. So I'm just going to chop those up real fine, okay? And then we'll use those, okay? So we'll put those aside. And now what we're going to do is we're going to cut our um, our hamon, and we rolled them before um, we started. And these are eight small pieces of ham on. Put them right there. And I'm going to ask my production person to hand me a paper towel, which would be great. I need one. And so I don't want to get the cheese all messed up. That's good. So once you get that all cut up, it's pretty easy. So thank you. And we'll just wipe that off a little bit where we have everything. Okay, put that right there. And then we're going to add a teaspoon of, once we get this all done, we're going to add a teaspoon of uh, the kosher salt to it and a quarter of a teaspoon of black pepper and a teaspoon of red pepper. So you've got some really nice spices there. I'll just cut those up really easily. And you're going to spread that on to this. And I have a little platter right here that we're going to use. And it's, it's a really nice, you could do it for a luncheon or whatever. And then I'm going to cut the cheese up. So I'm going to cut the cheese in half like this. Right, and I've, it's already usually cut into slices. So I like to do it a little bit of a crumble more so. So do that. And that's a whole, either mozzarella or burrata cheese. And you're going to cube it a little bit. All right, we're almost done with that. This takes little time to do, little time. So we're gonna cut that up a little bit, just into cubes almost. This is really a mild cheese, very mild cheese. 
And um, I had help with our watermelon. My uh, assistant helped me with the seeding and doing the watermelon. Uh, but when you're getting a watermelon, try to get one that's seeded. And if your store doesn't have it, then you have to seed it. So that's the reason why you could use other things. Okay, so I know that the first thing we need to do is to take, we're going to move this over, move this over a little bit, just like that. Okay, and then we're going to take our platter. And since we've already done our, our um, watermelon, they, it goes on first. And this is six cups of fresh uh, watermelon. Okay, six cups. So you want to take the watermelon and actually it serves like almost like lettuce. So we'll use this a minute, cut that up a little. Okay, and then just take these out. And I'm using gloves today because we've got lots of sticky stuff to work with, right? And just easier. That watermelon just looks gorgeous. This salad is so pretty. I can't tell you. And we're going to add those spices to our dressing. And that'll look really nice. You'll really surprise yourself, even if you've never cooked before. And all of our recipes, by the way, are on our website at um, thechefyouandi.com. And we also now have a new app. It's TV to go. We're on the Dash TV network. And it's for Androids and also for um, iPhones. You want to use all of your watermelon because this is really the base of the salad. So that's about as much as we're going to use, OK? So this is a trusty, dusty bag ball. And we use these all the time. We love them. You can store everything extra pieces in your bag well. But anyhow, what we're going to do is we're going to cut up some lemons. And we need two teaspoons of lemon juice. And so we need to do this. So this is the easiest way I know how to make it. Or you can use, um, you know, the fresh lemon juice that you can get at the store in a little container. I use that a lot of times. But I need enough to do this recipe. So. We're, we've got two small lemons here. And lemons are so nice to work with. I love lemons, don't you? They're really good for you. And even with water or anything else. So it's always nice to have lemons around. So we're going to do this. And we should have enough here. So just a second. All right, we're going to pour this in there and then measure out two teaspoons of lemon juice. That looks good. All right. So, all right. So now what we're going to do is we're going to arrange the tomatoes. We're going to arrange the tomatoes on to the watermelon that we've already cut up. So do that. And then you're going to take your cheese and you're going to take your bruschetta. And let's do that. All right, that looks good. All right, and now you want to take the bruschetta and put it on there. Just looks really nice. So you have so many different colors here. And then we're going to add the cheese. This cheese smells so good. And then when I put the dressing on it, it's even going to be better. It's because it's kind of almost like a green dressing, right? This is going to be for like six or seven people here. And I've got people that are coming over that are vegetarians, actually. So I'm going to make a separate one for them because they don't eat meat, of course. And, you know, it's hard to be a vegetarian every once in a while. It's really good for you, um, especially. And I love, what I love is lentil soup. 
Okay, so that's about enough. And we'll save that. We'll save the cheese for another thing. Now I'm going to take the green and I'm just going to decorate it so it has a little bit of a green look. It looks sweet. All right. So, really pretty. Now, use the rest of that. Put some more bruschetta on. I love this bruschetta. Or hamon. All right. And now what we're going to do is add a little bit more cheese here. And then I'm going to give you the directions, or not directions, directions and also we're going to take this now. So we've already done this, okay? I'm going to add two teaspoons of lemon juice. One, two, and then a teaspoon of salt, coarse kosher salt, okay? And a quarter, uh, a teaspoon of red pepper. And you could admit that if you wanted to. And a quarter of a teaspoon of pepper, black pepper. There we go. Now we've got it all. Okay, let's just put that in here. Now what we're going to do is we're going to mix this up. And then actually pour this onto our salad. Okay. So the nice thing about this bowl is you can do it very easily. And it's really going to have a nice flavor to it. All right. So we're going to take a short break. We're going to take a picture of the wonderful salad. And we're going to plate it on a nice plate for you, too. All right. We'll be right back. We're back on The Chef, you and I, and this is actually one of my favorite recipes. It's called chilled cantaloupe soup. And it's just so nice, refreshing type of soup that doesn't have a lot of calories and fat and stuff like that. It's really simple to make and it's really healthy for you. So the ingredients are from as follows. We have one medium sized cantaloupe and we're gonna cut it up into chunks. And then we are gonna use a half a cup of yogurt, real yogurt, um, usually at 0% fat, plain Greek yogurt. And then one teaspoon or tablespoon of grated fresh ginger and juice from one lemon, one or two pinches of sea salt, a dash of ground cinnamon or nutmeg, and a few fresh basil or mint leaves that we're gonna decorate it with. And the nice thing about this is you're going to make this and you're going to put it in the refrigerator because you want to get all those ingredients together and make them blend together so they have a really, really nice taste. So what we're going to do is we're going to cut up our cantaloupe, add all of our ingredients, put it in our food processor or blender, and blend it all together. And then we're going to pour it into this beautiful bowl right here and put it in the refrigerator. And usually this is just doing it for 24 hours. But if you have guest comings, you could actually put it in the freezer for maybe a half an hour so it'll get cold. Okay, so uh, we want to take a real short break here because we need to get the cinnamon. Instead of using cinnamon, we're going to use nutmeg because it's going into fall and I love nutmeg. It's got such a great nutty flavor to it. So let's do this first. Let's cut up our cantaloupes. Let's move everything around and we'll use this and then we'll cut up our cantaloupe and that'll be really simple. So in chunks, just like this, and I had already preceded it. So you want to make sure that you get all the seeds out because we're actually, what we're going to do is just put this into the food processor. So, and you don't want to use really, really big chunks, right? Okay. So that was one medium size cantaloupe. 
So, you know, you can find our recipes on the Chef You and I website, and they're printable, so you can print them out and make it really simple for yourself. Now, you know, your teenagers can make this. And, or you could do this for maybe a shower or something like that. So let's do this. We're going to add all of these to the, I'm going to put this in the little baggie for a minute until I get everything in there. All right. Whoops. Sorry about that. So then we're going to add all of those to our food processor. And we're going to, we missed, all right, that happens on the chef, you and I. You drop things, big deal. So we just want to put all that in there. And the nice thing is about the Bagwell, which is one of our wonderful sponsors. They've been with us for a long time now. Um, you can store your food. You can cook with it. You can do all kinds of different things with it. But the nice thing is that when you're doing a wonderful recipe, you can do it hands-free. So what we're going to do is we're going to put these in our food processor. Okay. All right, that's enough. We'll just start blending that up first, okay? And, oh, we gotta plug it in. That would be good. All right. So just blend it until it gets done. And then we'll add the rest of it. I don't even have to take the top off because we've cut everything up. But makes it nice and easy. Okay. Well, this is going to be a nice soup. So. It looks about like we've got enough there. Okay. So we'll do that. And once we get that all blended, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to add the rest of the ingredients. So I've got to take this off for a minute and then add our, our wonderful um, yogurt to it. So that's going to make it really creamy, right? And the rest of our ingredients. You can't, they, you know, in this recipe, you cannot omit the ginger. That's really important not to omit the ginger because it gives it a special kind of flavor. So that's one teaspoon of ginger. And then add that to it. And our recipe is right there. And then we're going to add our nutmeg. And that's a teaspoon of nutmeg. Okay, let's do this. And your lemon juice, one lemon, juice of one lemon. And we'll go get that. We've already done that. So that's one juice of one lemon in there. And now we'll blend everything together. And then you want to put that in the refrigerator after you're done with that. Now I'm going to add a pinch of salt to it now. I didn't want to do it. I wanted to get it really blended before I did that. So just put a little, well, guess what? Hold on. Come on. That's a pinch of salt. All right, now we're done. Now we're going to pour this into a container that we can put, uh, cover it, and put it in the refrigerator for 24 hours, okay? That's the best. That'll give you the best taste, okay? So we'll go ahead and do that. 
And you're gonna use the actual basil leaves that I have over here, two or three basil leaves to decorate it, okay? So let's just pour this in to the container. And you've got a nice soup to serve on a Sunday morning or for a shower or whatever. Now, we'll put this in the refrigerator and we'll let it get really nice and cold. And we'll be right back on The Chef You and I. We're back on The Chef You and I, and we're making the Polish cream cheese coffee cake. Now, this can be served for a shower, uh, for Sunday, to have guests over, but you can use it as a dessert as well. So, there's, there's lots of different ingredients, and we're going to mix in two different bowls. So, let's start with the ingredients first. And I pre-measured most of these. So the first thing that you're gonna do is you have one cup of white sugar, a half a cup of butter, one egg, a cup of sour cream, one teaspoon of vanilla extract, three cups of all-purpose flour, a teaspoon of baking soda, and also a teaspoon of baking powder. And then your filling is gonna be two eight ounces of packages of cream cheese softened, which we've already done a half a cup of sugar, one egg, and then the topping is going to be a half a cup of chopped pecans, a half a cup of brown sugar, one third cup of all-purpose flour, and one third cup of butter. And the nice thing about this is it's a really simple recipe, and you're gonna put it, pour it into a nine by 13 pan, which we've already pre-sprayed. So the thing that we're gonna do next is we're going to start doing our ingredients, and here's the instructions. So we preheated our oven to 350 degrees, okay? And we've greased our baking sheet. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna beat one cup of white sugar, and a half a cup of butter, which we have right here. And let's just do that really easily. We're gonna put that in there. And that's kind of already been kind of creamed. And we'll put that right there. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna add in one egg, right there, one egg. And um, actually add our sour cream. There's a cup of sour cream here. Add a cup of sour cream. And we're gonna beat this. And we want to add the vanilla extract, which is a teaspoon of vanilla extract. Okay. All right, we'll put that right there. And um, we're gonna mix this well first, and then we're gonna add our flour and the rest of our ingredients, okay? So let's do this. You're actually creaming this. And then you're gonna add your flour. And since fall's coming up, this is gonna taste so good. Just wanna mix that really well. So that's pretty well mixed. All right, so we're done with that. Now we're gonna add, gradually add our flour and our baking soda and our baking powder. And what we wanna do is we wanna add our flour in there. And it's gonna become a sticky dough. And that's what you want it to be. So, you see it's starting to get really, and that's what you want. 
I don't know if the camera can see this in a minute. Hold on. I'm going to move this out of the way and add the rest of our flour. You can see that it's become, it's got all, so you have to be reticent of what it's doing, so we're going to slow this down a little. So you can see it's becoming kind of a, a sticky dough. We're almost there. But that's the consistency of it. So you want to get that all well blended. You can use that. That's pretty sticky. Looks pretty good actually. We're back on the Chef You and I, and we beat our dough, and we're going to put half of the dough into the greased 13 by 9, 9 by 13 pan, and then we're going to beat the rest of our ingredients over here, so we only need half of the dough, so let's do half of the dough here, and you just want to push that down into your pan, okay. This is really a, a wonderful recipe, actually. I remember having this at my grandmother, my Polish grandmother's in Dayton, Ohio, and we loved it. So I don't get to do it very often. And it's really nice, so you can see that. Now I've got half the dough in there, right? So I'm gonna put that aside for a minute, and then I'm gonna cream my, and get a, uh, look at that. Now what we're going to do is we're going to cream our um, our sugar right here, our egg right here. Put the egg in. Okay. And then you're going to take the cream cheese, which is softened, by the way. Take this over here, which is softened, and I'm going to cut it into a couple of pieces, right? Put that in there. Two eight ounce, two eight ounce. So I'm going to start with this because I don't want to, I'll do the other one in just a second. That's why it has to be softened. Okay, and we're going to add the second one now so you can see that. Now I can add the second one to it very easily. Okay, just a second. And we'll add the second one. Here, we'll put this right here. And put that in there. I just love this cream cheese. It's so easy to work with. Okay, and we'll do that. And then just beat it until you get it all together. So that's the cream cheese and the sugar. Okay, so we've done that. And that's finished, okay? And once you've got that done, you've creamed all that together. And put that in there. And Let's see, let's move this to over here. So get this out of the way. 
And now what we're going to do is we're, since we mix the sugar, the egg, and um, the ingredients, we're going to add this on top of, with the butter, we're going to add this onto our uh, dough. So you want to spread that evenly. So that was cream cheese, sugar, and the egg. And then you're going to drop, after I get this finished, you're going to actually take the rest of your dough and you're going to do it by spoonfuls on top of this. Wait a second. Sorry. And we're going to do that. That's looking really good. Just cover the dough. And you have enough to do the whole thing here. And I used light Philadelphia cream cheese, by the way. Okay, so we've got that pretty well covered, all right? Okay, so we don't need this anymore. So what you need to do now is to take this and you want to do it in spoonfuls. So we're going to do this. And this will actually blend into everything once you got it in there, right? Really simple. And then after this, we're, what we're gonna do is we're gonna make, blend our topping, and that goes right on top of it. And then you're gonna put it in a 350 degree oven for 45 minutes, and you wanna check on it. Because some stoves, now my stove, which is a, actually a gas stove, it, uh, cooks a lot faster, so I have to watch it. And I'm using a glass pan, so you want to check that too. Pretty simple. You could get your husband to help you do this. So, or one of your kids. They love doing stuff like this. We're almost done. We're almost got it all. Okay, that's done. We're going to take a short break. We'll be right back. We now are going to make our topping, and that's made with, actually, a half a cup of chopped pecans. They're right there. Um, a third of a cup of all-purpose flour. Um, a third of a cup of butter, softened butter. Uh, a third, a half a cup of brown sugar, and that's it. So now what you do is you mix it together, and you want it to be kind of crumbly, and you're watching me do that, and it's starting to get really crumbly, and you want your butter to be, you know, really softened like this is, so that it'll absorb the flour, right? So you want to mix it well so it gets really crumbly because you're going to actually take this and you're going to put it on top of that beautiful uh, coffee cake, cream cheese coffee cake. And it's going to be so delicious. I can't wait to try it. Actually, again, I remember when my grandmother made it. So here we go. I'm going to get it really blended in together. So once you do that, my grandmother used to make Easter bread every year, and we're going to attempt that this year. I can't wait to try doing that. And she used to make five loaves at a time. And okay, so that looks like it's done. Okay. And I'm going to use my hands in this, okay, because that's kind of what you need to do. And they're clean. I'm going to get that all in there. All right, that looks good. 
All right, so we're going to move this. We're going to use this part of this. That's important. Hold on. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're going to just piece it on top of the actual cake. And then we're going to put it in the oven and we're going to bake it, okay? Let's do this. All right, now let's put that in the oven and bake it. Put some over here. Crumbles. And this is so easy. Anybody can do this. Let's put it in the oven. We're going to take a short break and we'll be right back on The Chef You and I. We're back on the Chef You and I show, and here is our beautiful Polish uh, cream coffee cake, cream cheese coffee cake. And I have to tell you, I had a little bite of it just a few seconds ago, and it's still warm, and I'm going to take a little piece out, and we're going to try it because I think it's going to be delicious, like I thought it was going to be. And it's still hot, so we're going to move this over here for a minute. And I am going to try it. It looks absolutely scrumptious. It's really easy. It's very tasty. And it's not really, really, really sweet. I love the pecans in it. I know that you're going to love this. It's a great Sunday, you know, brunch type of a coffee cake or just to have every day, maybe. But I know that you'll love making it. It was really simple to make, easy to do. We had a great show today. We had the wonderful, you know, different things that you can do very easily, you know, from your garden or wherever, and you're going to really enjoy it. And they were all healthy, wonderful dishes. And you know what? You can find all of our recipes on The Chef You and I. Just go up to our site at thechefyouandi.com. Look at us on YouTube under Catherine Raker YouTube. And you'll be able to see us on, on so many different stations. And now we're on tv to go on Cooking Network and also Lifestyles Network. We'll see you next time on The Chef You and I. Bye. Bon appetit. Thanks for joining us on the Chef You and I show today. We'll be back next week with another great and healthy recipe. Don't forget to visit our website, thechefyouandi.com, for all of our featured recipes, cooking tips, and clips of the show.